With its 24-valve V6 engine, double overhead cams, and 220 horsepower, only a select number will experience this sport interior and performance suspension. Power in the hands of a fortunate few. What's up guys? So today I wanted to do a little bit of reminiscing and looking back on the past and my vehicle past and I cannot do that without talking about one particular car. Um, to set this up, we're going to go way back many years to before I really had much to do with cars. When I was a teenager, I was a musician and I was pretty much all about playing music and traveling to shows and stuff. So the car I had back then was mostly just a utilitarian thing. But as that drew to a close, there came a time when the car I had been driving, which was a station wagon, but let's remember I was carrying equipment. The car that I was driving met an unhealthy end at the hands of a pickup truck. So I was in the market for a new car. I had nothing to drive at all, and I had a very modest budget with which to work. So I was looking for something in the $3,000 range. So I was out one day looking for cars. I come around the corner of a small car lot in Coolamy, North Carolina, which most of you won't know where that is. And I come on the side of a car that is kind of different looking than anything I'd ever seen. And I actually had to walk around to the front of it before I realized it was a Taurus. And my, I had relatives and stuff that had Tauruses before. I had never paid a lot of attention to them, but this particular one, when I checked it out, was a five-speed manual, which I was trying to find a stick, so that was a cool thing for me at the time. And it just so happened that when I talked to the car lot owner, he was willing to let it go for, I want to say, around $2,700, and this is years and years ago. So I bought it, and my first impression of the car, um, as you know, this is it behind me. It was, it turned out to be an 89 five-speed SHO, and I didn't know what that meant when I bought it. I had no idea what an SHO was. I only knew what a Taurus was. But I drove it and it was cool and it was different and it had nice seats. So I, I bought it. That day after I bought it, I brought it home and I washed it and I got it all shined up because believe it or not, at this particular time it had good paint. And I backed it onto my carport at my house and I was like, you know, I'm a teenager so I'm really excited to have what, I, what was to me a nice car. And I invite my friends over and I'm gonna show them this cool new car that I just bought and take them for a ride in it and we're looking it over in the carport and everybody gets in the car and it won't crank and it wouldn't crank for the whole time they were there so I had the great experience of having just bought a car tried to show it off and then shown that it didn't work. So a few minutes later, it started working again. I drove it halfway down the road, it shut off again. And we had it towed to what turned out to be in the small town that we lived in, the only mechanic in town that would work on that car. And it was determined that it needed a crank sensor. And I wanna say they charged uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $350, I believe, to replace that on that. And that was a big moment because at that moment, I realized that A, I didn't know enough about this car and B, I could not afford to keep this thing if I was going to have someone else work on it. And it turns out that that was a sort of a life changing experience for me because on someone else's advice, I went online and I searched for SHO owners clubs. Uh, this led me eventually to showforum.com, which is, I still believe, probably one of the best resources for knowledge on those cars anywhere. And I started researching and I started reading and the more I found out about the car, the more interesting it was, the more I wanted to find out about it. Um, I bought parts and saved up and did my first 60K service myself, which for anyone who doesn't know SHOs is a pretty big 
job, including a timing belt. And it kicked off in me a desire to understand vehicles better. And the more I found out, the more I realized that I enjoyed finding out. And this led to me studying more and learning more and trying new jobs and learning things about other cars. And um, I kept the 89 SHO for, I wanna say eight or nine years or something like that. And by the time I was done with it, it had been through everything. It was a daily driver for a while. Um, I had put nitrous on it. And was racing it on the street, which I shouldn't have been doing, but on the street and at drag strips sometimes against other street cars and uh, then it, it made me want to learn more about different kinds of kinds of driving so i started autocrossing And I was drag racing and I started trying to get it on a road course and as I learned more about that I discovered more of the weaknesses of the chassis so I started modifying more which led me to learn even more things and actually led to me working on cars professionally because as I learned more and more and realized I enjoyed learning more and more I wound up apprenticing at a one of the big chain shops and worked there for a few years and then went to another big chain shop as a technician because by then I had gotten uh, ASE certified in several different categories also. And um, it just kicked off this cascade of vehicle knowledge and learning because I was working on cars 55 hours a week, every week. I was going home at night, modifying my own car, working on my own car and my family's cars. I was racing on the weekends. I was going to car shows when I could go to car shows, going to drag strips, road racing, uh, auto crossing, buying a lot of tires, basically just everything. And I was, I guess I'm fortunate that I was able to do that because I was able to be supported long enough for me to be able to put that much effort into learning vehicles. But I spent basically the better part of the next 10 or 15 years expanding upon what that car got me started on and you know the next thing i know i'm like i said I'm, i i wound up instructing at autocross schools i took uh, nationally accredited driving classes uh, i did like i said a little road racing a little drag racing by the time i got to the end of this car i had gone full-blown gutted race car set up with this thing um, i had done coney yellows and ground controls a lot of aftermarket suspension parts, a uh, lot of other engine stuff. I don't remember what else all that I changed now because that's been so long ago now. And I eventually got frustrated with the limitations of the chassis because it was heavy and because it was front wheel drive and it was hopefully un hopelessly unbalanced. So um, I did wind up selling out for a while. I, I gave up on that car and I picked up a 91 240 SA and that took it to the next level because with the availability of parts and stuff, I mean, that led me to learning bodywork, more advanced vehicle setup forced induction on NA engines, further types of tuning, race car setups as far as alignments go and suspension geometry and modifying those things. Um, I already mentioned body, but that includes paint and body modifications, 
uh, other ways of lightweighting cars. I had to learn about metallurgy so that I knew what I could do and could not do with modifying steering knuckles and control arms and different things with that and how to tell which tires were going to be stickier than others. A lot of little things, but it was just years of just this constant growth and expansion because I wanted to know everything about cars. And it led me to a 15 year long career as a professional automotive mechanic. Um, it's led me to setting up a lot of fun cars to drive. Autocrossing for several years religiously and getting to ride in, work on, and mess with some incredibly fast cars. And all of this ride, this whole experience, everything that I've done with these vehicles and everything that I know and how I still make a living today, all of it comes back to this. This, that I can't, look, I can't find it in the camera. This vehicle right here. That one 89 SHO that I happened to wander up, up on in a small car lot in Coolmead. And I don't know what would have happened had I not picked it up, but I'm really glad that I did. And if any of you out there don't know what an SHO is, don't know what makes it different from a Taurus, and don't know why I'm sitting here blabbering on about how a Taurus changed my life, watch for the next video. I want to fix that. The next video I put out will be what is an SHO? And I plan on getting pretty, well, fairly in depth. But if you don't know what an SHO is and you're a car enthusiast, you need to know what an SHO is. So stay tuned for that. But I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry I'm just sitting here rambling on about nonsense, but uh, it meant it made a difference in my life. And it's to me an example of how vehicles can be more than just vehicles. I mean, the right car at the right time can change a lot of things. But this is getting really sappy, so I'm gonna let this go. But if you enjoyed this at all, drop me a like. Um, comment on anything else you want me to talk about. Let me know any of my audience that owns an SHO or did own an SHO and what you thought of them. Or if you're one of the rare people that remember this guy when it was still running and still with me, uh, let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys next time with more information on the infamous Yamaha powered SHO. See you guys next week.